Russia is stepping up its attacks on Ukraine's eastern Donbass region. Heavy fighting has been reported in and around the industrial city of Severodonetsk, where the regional governor says at least 12 people have been killed in shelling. Moscow says it will continue its offensive until it achieves its goals. The battle for Severodonetsk. Its capture would allow Russia to advance into the other half of the Donbass region. The shelling is constant. Some 15,000 people are believed to be hiding in shelters. It's hell. You know, it's hell, uh, first, uh, everyday shelling. Second, a lot of death. Third, humanitarian uh, problems. The Russians have reportedly surrounded Severodonetsk on three sides. The governor of Luhansk province has warned that evacuations are now too risky. Still, some are seizing what could be their last opportunity to escape. Now it seems like the front is all around the city. It's practically surrounded. There are tanks. There are like, you, we can see uh, uh, trucks from the army being, being deployed around the city. So it seems very clear that, to me, uh, it's about to fall. Elsewhere in Donbass, trains are filling up as people seek the relative safety of western Ukraine. Since the war broke out, Ukraine has become a country synonymous with defiance. But Russia's latest offensive is testing its limits. My country is dying, says this man. I am worried, but we will win. Well, our correspondent, Matthias Bullinger, is in the Donbass region. He's in Kramatorsk, and I asked him about the concentration of firepower there. Yeah, it's in, in, indeed intense firepower that everybody who uh, uh, we've spoken to has said they've basically brought everything they have here and uh, in order to capture this one city of Severodonetsk or to be more precise, Severodonetsk and the city that is next to it, separated only by a river, Lysychansk. Um, these two places, which each of them had once 100,000 inhabitants, um, uh, are surrounded from three sides, Severodonetsk the nest from three sides and the uh, other side, Lysychansk, is open. But the road there has become under huge pressure. Russian troops are very close and keep shelling this road. And that is what makes it so dangerous to travel there. So um, Russia has made constant advances in this direction. Um, all of these advances were not very big. The Ukrainian army is holding uh, the lines as much as they can, but every small gain brings them closer to the goal of surrounding in, and the region is now extremely dangerous. And we, the, the rest of us can only imagine what it must be like to, to live under the constant threat of that constant shelling and firepower. How are people there coping? What are they telling you? Yeah, shelling is happening all over the region, even here in Kramatorsk, which is quite far from the uh, line. A, a plane today dropped bombs on a on a residential area. Um, but of course, these places that are closer to the front line, they are under uh, under constant shelling. It's very difficult for people to live there. We've been to Lysychansk uh, two days ago, and it's a really, it's really, really, really dire situation. People hear this shelling, they live in the basements. Um, uh, you never know where it hits and this is even, this place is less, uh, uh, has been shelled less than Severodonetsk where shelling is more constant and you see, you can watch across, you can see across the river and you see Severodonetsk always a few points that are burning. Um, so um, it, life has become very dangerous there, plus the problems with, uh, with, uh, with, with supplies. Drinking water has to be brought in by trucks. Now, this, when the access is getting more difficult, there's also a problem with drinking water. No electricity, no uh, mobile phone network, no uh, internet. So people there feel really abandoned. They, some of them are saying that the power, like like the people in power, the, the administration has abandoned them. And I've met uh, the governor of this region and I've asked him what he says, uh, what he has to say uh, towards these people. If we continue to evacuate them, if doctors are still working there, if we continue to supply them with drinking water, who can say that we have given up on them? 
By remaining in these places that are under Russian fire, they expose everybody to danger. Let's stick to the facts. First, the authorities are present in these places. We don't stay there overnight because it is not safe. What would be the use of staying in a place where there is no connection and no possibility to organize any help? None at all. Walking across the central square and telling people, look, I'm here with you, that does not help these people. The people who are staying there are exposing everybody to danger themselves and the people who keep bringing them water, medicine and food. Matthias Bullinger, it, it almost sounds like the governor there is blaming uh, people for staying. He was definitely angry at this, uh, um, uh, uh, at this uh, confrontation, or he was not happy uh, with this position, of course. Um, he has a point, though, because the authorities have been telling people to leave since the beginning of April, so more than six weeks already, and they have organized a lot of evacuations, and uh, many people have evacuated. If you, if you look if you, behind me, there are very few people on the street here in Kramatorsk, and it's the same in many places. The tragedy is that those people who remain there are often people who are really afraid of going somewhere because they're very poor and they are afraid that nobody will help them. These are people who are old, who feel it's too much for them to go. It's also people who are saying, well, um, in the end, we've seen a lot in our life and it might not end that badly. And then often when they realize it's worse this time, it is bad, um, there's already these opportunities to evacuate. They're already closing and they remain trapped there. Um, so it's a, it's a very tragic situation. But uh, the one thing you cannot blame the authorities for is that they have not told people to leave. All right, thank you for that. Uh, Matthias Bullinger in Kramatorsk.